This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're in the capital here to announce a massive signing for Boxer and Sky Sports. The cat's out the bag, Ben Whitaker, uh, someone that everyone was after, joined with you guys. So it must be delighted to get him on board, Adam. Absolutely thrilled. I think Ben Whitaker um, is possibly a box office star of the future. He's got the personality, he's got the skill set, he's got the talk, he's got the ambition. And I really think he could be something very, very special in British boxing. He's 24 years old. He was obviously disappointed, bitterly disappointed with the silver medal in Tokyo. But he's his own man. And, you know, he thought, I think, of going back in, trying to win gold in Paris. But you know what? He wanted to turn professional. And it was a, a huge battle to get him. Um, and rightfully so, because he's an elite fighter. I think he's going to be... Um, compelling television in many ways I think you're going to get something different with him um, it's difficult to compare fighters I'm not saying he's as talented as some of the guys I'm going to mention but he reminds me a little bit of when James DeGale turned or Nassim Hammond or maybe a David Hay possibly even a, a, a flash of Floyd Mayweather as well and uh, he's got a long way to go to prove he's anything in the caliber of any of those fighters but um, I believe he's going to become a world champion and uh, I believe he's chosen the right platform on Sky. Uh, ben Shalom and I worked extremely hard over many months. And um, yeah, listen, I think he, he knows what we can do on Sky. I think he knows that we can make him a star. Um, he's got to do what he does in the ring. He's got to excite in promotional terms outside it. He's got Ben Shalom, the bright new entrepreneurial promoter and uh, a great team behind him. So I think he's made the right choice for Ben. And I'm delighted that he joins the likes of Caroline, Fraser, Lauren and Karis as five fabulous Olympians and the real next gen. And, uh, you know, we saw Galal Yafai go to, to Eddie and I think that was the right choice for Galal. Eddie's got a, um, a huge connection with uh, all of those maybe lighter fighters in those weights and Galal I think will be fast tracked to a world title as well as some of ours. So each takes their own choice. And um, I'm delighted that Ben has joined us. And I think that he's going to be a brilliant addition to what's a really flourishing stable. The other Olympians made their minds up a little bit quicker. The guys who joined you and you said Galau going to Matram. Um, so I'm sure Ben had this battle. Um, we know Matram were eager to get him on board. So what was the ultimate factor uh, for Ben to join Boxer and Sky Sports? And how comes it took so long? It's a really good question, of course. Eddie would want him. Of course we want him. He's, he's class and he's got that charisma, that certain spark that I think um, maybe we haven't seen in boxing for a while. Um, you know, you look at the, uh, the posters and lobbing the money around and, you know, he's, he's a bit Marmite. And I think uh, some people are going to take to him and some won't, but everyone's going to watch him. Why did he choose us? I think, look, he's, he's taking a, a chance on... Uh, on a new young promotional company. But I think what Boxer have done in the last year have been phenomenal. Um, I think that's been a, a really impressive factor. Look at Khan Brook and all the shows we've managed to get on, you know, really from a standing start. And it's a, it's a long game, this. This is a, you know, a, a, a two, three, four year project. And I think it's, look, he's here to talk to his fellow Olympians. I know he's close to Fraser and obviously he's seen Karras and Lauren to Sky, which was, you know, another, you know, real tough fight. Uh, it's not been easy, this. It's been a, almost a year of, uh, of real hard work on everyone's side. Um, I don't know. I think he relates to Ben. I think that I've met him on a number of occasions, him and his dad, and I had a good hour on the phone with him a few weeks ago. And look, I told him, I said, Eddie's a great promoter. Ben's going to be a great promoter. That's a difficult choice. But there's no choice in my mind. If you want to be a star and you want the, the football audience and the Formula One audience and wider still into the Sky you know, platform and Arsenal, you've got to be with us. And I think he's probably thought that that's the right decision for him in the, in the long term. And uh, I'm delighted he's made that decision. Um, it was nip and tuck. I thought we'd lost him. And... Um, I'm just uh, really glad, Umar, that uh, Ben Whittaker will be with Boxer and with Sky. As I said, I think he's a phenomenal addition. Um, but the proof is how he develops. And 
you know, he'll do most of the talking in the ring, but hopefully plenty outside as well to really capture the imagination, not just of the, the boxing audience, but the casuals as well. I think he's got that crossover appeal. I think Ben Whitaker is going to be somebody to watch. And I appreciate he's not even made his professional debut yet, but an Olympian, as you said, a guy not only special in the ring, but brings you something outside the ring with his talk and character. Are we looking at a potential Sky Sports box office star here? Potentially, yes. As you say, you never know. Uh, I remember when we started Ryan Rose's career and he got knocked down a couple of times, I think, in his pro debut. I think Jamie Moore did as well. You never know how they're going to start off. My good friend and colleague Johnny Nelson took four fights to even get a win on the board. So we don't know, but I think Ben has a real ambition. Uh, he's been training frenetically hard, sort of waiting to turn professional. And when we launch him, we'll, uh, we'll see how good he is. I believe in him and uh, his family and his team around him and 258 believe in him. And I think that that's the important thing. Um, he's got bundles of talent. It's just whether he can uh, make that transition from amateur to pro. It's not an easy one, but I think that he's got the experience in the unpaid ranks uh, and the quality um, to make a real impression on the professional uh, sport. And as we know, it just will take time. And sometimes you get stars that make it and sometimes they, they fall away. But I think Ben has, uh, has got enormous potential and he ticks a great deal of boxes. And if you look at him, he looks the part, he sounds the part, he can fight. And as I said, he's a bit Marmite and I think people will either take to him or not. But I think he's going to put bums on seats. And uh, that's why he reminds me a little of the, the De Gale, the Naz, the Hay, the Mayweather type of characters. He's his own man, of course. Uh, but I know he looks up to uh, to those individuals and to uh, to the greats in the past. He's a he's a historian. He loves his boxing. I know he's a big fan of Tommy Hearns and others. So look, he's he's got a real opportunity. He's got the best platform, the best young promoter in Ben Shalom. And uh, good luck to uh, to Ben. We'll be working very very hard and very closely with him to give him all the support we can. And uh, hopefully, as you say, turn him into one day a box office star. After listening to that for seven minutes, I'm very excited to see the, the professional career of Ben Whitaker. Uh, Adam, of course, we've had such a busy schedule uh, the last three weeks. I know you've got your boxer show this Saturday as well, but I just want to work my way backwards. So we'll start with Canelo Bivol. I haven't seen you for a while. We've been, we've been past like ships in the night, haven't we? Different parts of America and all sorts. So, uh, yeah, Dimitri Bivol, what a wonderful performance. I, for one, didn't think he'd beat Canelo. I think I was... Uh, I was not alone in that and uh, I just felt, you know, we've had Dimitri a few times on Sky and while he's looked good, at times he's not looked great, uh, especially if you take the Craig Richards performance, for example. And I think the people underestimated him, firstly at light heavyweight and secondly his skill set. Uh, brilliant amateur, wonderful professional. And I think we all, including Canelo, probably took him slightly lightly or took our eye off the ball. I thought he was great. I thought once he worked out that he was naturally the bigger man and stronger. He could then go about his technical boxing, which was fantastic. He, his jab was brilliant. Um, he, read the, he read the fight so well and his tactics were spot on. I thought the judges were way out. I thought it was much wider. Uh, Dimitri Bivol deserved the, the win. It was a huge upset and uh, Canelo has to, uh, to go again. And you know, I'd probably like to see him fight Golovkin next, um, but we'll see, he'll, uh, he'll be hurting. He'll want to get revenge on Dimitri Bivol, but that might be tough. It's, uh, you know, he's taken a step up. I love the fact Canelo challenges himself. He's a wonderful fighter, fantastic ambassador. And, you know, in many ways, it's a shame that the, the pound for pound king is, is, has lost. But let's not take anything away from what a wonderful win it was for Dimitri Bivol. He's announced himself on the map. He's, uh, he's a, a terrific fighter in his own right. And... Listen, it's, uh, that's boxing for you, isn't it? You get the upsets, and it was a big upset. Uh, but, you know, hats off to Dimitri, and I'm sure Canelo will come again, and there'll be more challenges for him ahead. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't owe us anything, does he? And maybe it was, uh, he, had, he had that win over Kovalev, but a rather faded Kovalev, and maybe against a very sort of ambitious, strong, and pretty peak Dimitri Bivol, it was um, a weight division slightly too far. Thoughts on Taylor Serrano? Oh, brilliant fight. Wonderful fight. Gutted I wasn't there. Um, you know, we followed Katie since the, the very beginning. I was there through, uh, through our amateur career in London 2012. She's a good friend of mine. Um, 
Yeah, she's been a pioneer, hasn't she? When she turned professional on, on Sky in 2016, I think it was with Eddie and Barney Francis, and we gave her the platform. She's been fantastic. She's been an inspiration to the likes of, uh, you know, your Tashas and Chantels and Terry Harpers and everyone that's come through. Katie has been absolutely fantastic. And, of course, when Eddie left and took his fighters to the zone, that meant Katie went. So it was disappointing for us. But look, and I would love to have been in New York, but uh, and I would have gone if I hadn't had the fight in Vegas, but we were with Shakur Stevenson that night, who was brilliant himself. Um, and unfortunately, I had to watch Katie and, uh, and Amanda Serrano's epic fight on a, on a small screen, um, which was difficult because I was trying to concentrate on, on, the, on the card in Vegas. So um, I had to watch it again, but what a fight. What a great, great fight. And I know people will say it was pretty close. I thought Katie deserved it. I thought Amanda had, obviously, her moments, that huge fifth, and she could have won it, and it was just a fantastic, fantastic fight. Not, not an advert for women's boxing, an advert for boxing. It was brilliant. One of the great fights in the garden, packed, and topped by two, two women. And I know Eddie and Ben and, and, and all of us that have had huge input into you know, women's boxing and to making sure that, you know, this, that they get their star, you know, billing and they get all the, all the money that, that they, they can and it's, it's, it's as equal as it can be. I mean, they're, they're just leading the way in many ways. Katie, Amanda, Savannah, Clarissa, you know, Tasha, the list goes on. And look at Lauren and Karis and Caroline and everyone coming in the next generation. They're inspired. Katie Taylor is a one-off. We'll never see the like of her again. She's a phenomenon to have done it in the amateurs. Five worlds, six Europeans, an Olympic gold, carried the flag for Ireland, unbeaten as a pro, cleaning up. Big fight against Serrano. She owes us nothing. I'd love to see her fight in Ireland. And um, I look forward to catching up with her soon. Before we go back to Fury White, Eddie Earn and Frank Smith were quite disgruntled, well, really disgruntled about the fact that Sky Sports, in their opinion, didn't give Taylor Serrano and Canelo Bivol much coverage. So do you want to make a comment on that, please, Adam? <laughs> well, they were very public with it. Eddie was very public with it. Um, Frank and Joe Markovsky sort of contacted me in private. It was a little bit, bit different. But um, look, I, I think... And I said to the Sky team, I think this is a fight that we absolutely have to get behind. Um, we had our own uh, show, a top-ranked show, Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez. So it was important for us to push that. That's our business. But we're also in the boxing business. We're independent. Katie Taylor has been a great star for us over the years. Um, unfortunately, we don't have her anymore. That doesn't mean she's not fighting. It was a massive fight. And uh, I think that Sky Sports made sure, certainly in the last sort of Thursday, Friday, when the press conference happened, the way in and covering the fight. And I think that there was plenty on it then. But, uh, yeah, I think um, they had a point. And I wanted to make that clear around the building that I felt very strongly that Katie Taylor um, deserves universal attention. Amanda Serrano, too. You know, we have been real advocates of women's boxing. And just because, unfortunately, we didn't have the fight doesn't mean it's not happening. It means it is happening. And it was a great fight, and we reported it. And um, I think we got it right in the end, but um, I understand what they said, and Eddie did it in his own inimitable way uh, in front of camera. But, um, yeah, he had a point. Is it fair to say the coverage only came for those disowned shows because of the pressure that Eddie put on publicly? No, no? Not at all, not at all, not at all. I really believe that, you know, we should... We've got a business, let's not forget that. Eddie left us for DAZN, he made that decision. We didn't ask him to go, he made the decision to go to DAZN. He took all his fighters and he left us with a rebuilding project. We, we signed with Boxer for four years with very few fighters and Ben and I have been building that over the last year, as you've seen, I think fairly successfully. We've got a great, select, diverse, different group and we're really excited about them. But of course, Eddie's got a, an enormous armory at Matchroom and at DAZN. They do a great job at Matchroom. And DAZN are doing a fantastic job of fights week in, week out. So you've got to ask DAZN as well whether they, you know, chat from the rooftops about our shows, about Carl Brook, etc. Because it, it is. And again, when there's clashes of shows, it's difficult. If Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano had been on a weekend that we didn't have anything, then of course, it probably would have been a bit more. But we had our own show. So I think 
it was fair to talk about our own show, push our own show, promote it. And let's not forget, that was a unification. That was a huge Vegas fight, different to Katie and Amanda, but a very big fight in boxing terms. So we rightfully talked about that. Do they talk much about Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at it, but I doubt it. So we talked about that. And I know that Andy Scott and I in Vegas were talking about Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. You know, I, I don't... I'm not, I'm not around news desks and sports desks the whole time, but I made it very clear, not after Eddie spoke before, that I think it's important for us to cover this fight. And I think that what they want to do is wait for a press conference and wait for something to report on. Yeah. So they waited for the press conference on Thursday, and I think you'll find that the, the traffic after Thursday was much more. But look, it's yeah, he says, she says, throwing things around. Let's not forget, Katie Taylor was a sky fighter. She left to go to the zone with Eddie, and we still absolutely adore her. We adore the fight. Amanda Serrano was absolutely brilliant. I really hope there's a rematch, and I, for one, would like to be ringside. So, uh, but I'll ask Eddie and Frank in private about that because there's no point going public and saying, look, they shouldn't say this and we shouldn't say that. As I said to you before, I think they had a point. We should be covering it, and I think we did. We did in the end. We did cover it, uh, but it wasn't about Eddie's public um, speech about it. It was the fact that I certainly felt all week that we should be talking about Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano just as we were Shakur Stevenson and Oscar Valdez. Both big fights. Appreciate your honesty on that one. Well, we haven't actually spoke since Sasha Fury knocked out Dillian White at Wembley Stadium. Long time ago, it seems. <laughs> Long Do you time think ago. he retires? Is he back doing his bins in Morecambe now? That's what. <laughs> um, do I think he retires? I think that he misses his family when he's in training camp. Um, he's very family uh, orientated. He's obviously, they've been a massive supporter around him during some dark times too. And I think Tyson Fury owes nothing to anybody. He had a fantastic win at Wembley uh, against Dillian White. 94,000, it was a great week. I enjoyed, enjoyed being around it, enjoyed working with Tyson for, uh, um, for the time. And Sky Sports News were around him and ESPN, and it was great. And uh, BT put on a great show. And I think, look, it was a, a fantastic happening. Would it be the right place to go out? Now, Kel Brooks decided the right place to go out was after his, uh, his huge win over Amir Khan, and that's fantastic. And I'm sure we'll talk about Kel in a minute. But as far as Tyson goes, I think everybody's saying he's not going to retire. Well, look, it's up to him. I think what he'll do is he'll take time out. Maybe he'll get involved in a bit of WWE and a few fun things. And let's see uh, what happens with Usyk and AJ and you know, other fights that are floating in front of him. But um, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of Tyson Fury. Yeah, you mentioned it there, Kel Brook, someone who has officially retired. Your thoughts? Uh, massive, massive um, admirer of Kel Brook. You know, we've known him since he was nine or ten in the Winkerbank gym, obviously very close to Johnny Nelson, who's very close to Kel and the whole Brendan Ingle uh, camp. I remember when he walked on his hands through the Winkerbank gym, he was a kid. And so, yeah, we've followed Kel for a long time and we've, we've had him largely on Sky through that, his amazing British title of triumph in Scotland. People forget about that when he destroyed Kevin McIntyre. I saw Kevin the other week, actually. He's a referee now in Scotland. I saw him the other week. I think he's still... I think the shock waves of that night probably have never left him. It was an amazing performance, and he never, it never really gets mentioned. But uh, Kel's been fantastic, entertaining. You know, all of the lights and that ring walk for the Khan fight, unbelievable. But many other entertaining shows. And, you know, he went out to America and he won his world title against Sean Porter, and that was a fantastic victory. Um, you know, he, he dared to be great against Golovkin. He had to drag himself back down to welterweight against one of the pound-for-pound -pound kings in Errol Spence. He's had a tough career. You know, he's had eye problems. Um, but he was, he was all about beating Amir Khan. And I think when he did that, he had nothing left to prove. And, of course, you know, you get that great feeling. And maybe he thinks, oh, now I'm fighting brilliantly again. I'll, I'll fight on. And I'm sure... He was very tempted with fights like the Eubank fight, the Conor Ben fight, maybe a calm rematch down the line or others. But I'm really pleased um, that Kells made that decision. I think it's the right decision to go out on top. Not many do. Johnny did, Carl Frotch did, Joe Calzaghi did. It doesn't always happen. And I think that it would be really good if Kell can you know, retire, stay retired and enjoy his money, enjoy his success. And, you know, we'll always be there for him because... He's been part of Sky Sports Boxing history, and I want to thank him for him and his family and, and, and Dominic and obviously Brendan, uh, the late great Brendan, for everything they've done with Kelbrook because he's given us so many great nights on Sky, and I'm going to miss him.
Well, I'm sure if he wants to stay in the sports, Sky Sports have got a role for him as a pundit uh, in the future. Just before we close off then, appreciate your time on IFL, Adam. Tell me about the show this Saturday on Sky Sports, a tournament show. Why should everyone tune in? Well, did you tune into the last one? I mean, Coventry was absolutely fantastic. It was a, a brilliant night. There was action from that first round of the first fight all the way through. Um, Dylan getting that great win in front of his home fans and being drummed in every time. Listen, more of the same, but at Cruiserweight in Manchester, it's a wide open field. You've got punchers, slicksters, boxers. A couple of those have got defeats, some undefeated. It's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for the grassroots fighters, the young novices, to get into the mix. It's just going to be a high octane action. Eight of them start, one finishes. What else do you want on a Saturday night? Three and a half hours of great entertainment after Liverpool have won the FA Cup. Should be fantastic, Umar. I can't wait. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.